And there he is, Killian. What's going on, buddy? Hey, man. How are you? Good, man. Good. So, uh, doing some research in here and uh, learning about the Charming Liars. And um, it, it, it's funny. It's kind of like a spider web. Every time I like think I have something, like it opens up another can of worms and I'm going somewhere else with things. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's. I mean, uh, I I couldn't have put it any better myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like initially, like I was like, I mean, you got the whole this whole Elton John thing, which I want to get into. But like, um, the, the band's originally from the UK, but then I guess it's you're not from the UK. You're originally from here, and you met the guys when they moved over here. Yeah, I'm I'm from Los Angeles, so it, it worked out really perfect, actually, from one big big city to the next, you know. Did you well, like? How did you meet the guys? First of all, um, it's actually through a mutual friend. Um, we at the time um, we kind of just bumped into each other and and kind of uh, had kind of talked a little bit about maybe because we were both in, in in kind of a position where we kind of wanted to write something a little different musically because we okay. were both in kind of uh, doing kind of a little bit harder music prior. So okay. it was kind of like a, uh, like a, you know, just that perfect moment where we met with like, hey, let's let's try and write something a little different, and you know, there it is. So, which I was going to say, like, I mean, coming from, uh, especially for you, coming from like the LA scene, and you're saying we're a little harder. So, I, was it like a more of a harder rock style? It was. It was kind of like a, a more hard rock kind of, um, kind of vibe, almost kind of like an STP kind of sound. Okay. And I had been doing that for, for quite a long time, kind of more of the harder stuff. Um, and like I said, kind of, around, you know, I kind of hit a point or kind of a plateau where I kind of, you know, was feeling like I wanted to do something different. And, and I, I mean, I think you can kind of hear it in, in our music. There's some harder elements, but, you know, it, sure. it definitely isn't just like a hard rock band, you know. Do you think uh... – like if if you never met the, the the other guys from the Charming Liars, like if, if you didn't meet them, do you think you still would have gone with this different musical direction, or you think you would have still kind of stayed with that harder STP type style? I think that, that that I was kind of in a in a at a point where I was I was transitioning out of it regardless. Um, but you know, had I not met the guys, I'm not sure what you know actualization the music would have kind of materialized into. Sure. You know, on my end. Um, but as far as yeah, I think I think regardless, it, it was kind of in a in a changing point. Um, but it, you know, obviously, really glad that I did link up with them because you know we were we were able to come up with something pretty interesting. And now, did you did you ever say to the guys like uh, because because before I realized that you actually are from uh, L.A. Like, I mean, it's kind of a ballsy move for them because I, I mean, it's not like. The, the the LA scene. I mean, you being from LA can, can tell me different, but I mean, from what I've heard, it's not like the over booming scene like you know people might expect of of yesterday, where these guys are like. I mean, it, it's and it's not like they're moving across the country; they're moving across the world to come here to, to yeah. follow their musical dreams. And I mean, that's kind of a ballsy move, <laughs> don't you think? Especially for the style of music you guys are doing. I mean, it's again, it's not like the the STP hard rock style that's more customary with LA. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a great it's a great point. I mean, the, the funny thing about LA is that, you know, it, it's it's so big that each little like literally each each neighborhood, you know, one street over from each from the next has has its you know has its own sound really. You know, when you get mm-hmm. to kind of like the Los Feliz or the Silver Lake area, things kind of get a little um, uh, definitely a little more alternative and a little more um, I don't want to say hipster, but but the the, the oh. sound kind of you know, it reflects kind of the neighborhood itself. Um, but, and then, you know, obviously you have the Sunset Strip where things, you know, uh, you know, historically have been more, more hard rock or rock and roll. And, and you can still see a little glimmers of that. It's still there. But, um, yeah, I think, I think the, the, the main reason that they decided to kind of make, make the big leap was that, you know, they, they'd grown up in London and they, they played um, all of the clubs there. And, and, I mean, the thing with, with, um, with that area, with you know, with the UK, is that you can do it all in like two weeks because it's you know it's kind of a <laughs> right. smaller place, you know. But when you come to America, it, it you know, I I don't necessarily think it was only just because of all the all of the 
you know, connections in L.A. that they, they that they wanted to make. I think it was also just opening up the American market, you know, sure. knowing that, you know, we, they can leave and go and play from L.A. to New York and, you know, and, and it taking a little longer than taking, you know, getting from one end of the coast in, in uh, the U.K. to the other, you know? Right, right. So now you guys have – um. I mean, you got the attention of one of the biggest musical icons of all time, Sir Elton John. Um, now, how did that come to be? Is that from you guys doing the cover of I'm Still Standing? Is that what really opened his eyes to you guys, or ears, I should say? Well, what was great is, um, I mean, one thing that you know a lot of people kind of know about Elton, especially now as of late, late, lately, is that he, he really um, has a passion for, for newer artists, and he has a passion for kind of – um, uh, you know, supporting them, and, and he does that a lot on his on his radio show, and that was actually where he, I think we kind of first caught his 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 ear, if you will, um, when we had our single Soul. He he was one of the um, the first to kind of spin it on his show, and and I think we kind of you know um, got on his on his radar a bit more, and 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 over the years have kind of been able to um, develop more more of a relationship with him. And, and when we did the cover, um, you know, we, we sent it over and he loved it. He was, he was really, really, um, he was really pleased with it. So we were able to do that, um, that along with the, the Grammy Cares Foundation and, and uh, donate all the proceeds to that. So it was really, really cool nice. to kind of work side by side with him on that. Nice. Now, it, it's funny because um, like, like I, I do these shows and I'll do like um, – because I interview so many musical guests anymore. I'm just doing like, you know, one-off interviews and, and I release them as separate episodes for each artist. But I do a, a live show on Thursday nights and we end up doing three, four hours and it's me and uh, a couple co-hosts. And um, one of our big discussions we, we do each week is we'll do like a top five musical countdown and we'll throw out a, um, a topic and pertaining to those songs. And a couple weeks back, we did um, reimagined covers so it, it's funny because since we've done that, like things like more and more of these covers are, are coming to my attention now because we focused on it. And when I was listening to your guys' version of I'm Still Standing, I right away I sent it over to my co-host. I'm like, yo, reimagine cover. Check this one out. And he's like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, that song was like such a happy song, happy, like a happy <laughs> good lucky song. You guys kind of really made it very almost sad like, but it's totally a really cool version. Yeah, it was, I mean, when you're doing a song like, like you said, like one of the most recognized artists of all time, you know, his catalog is just so immense. When you pick that song, it's that, that that's a difficult enough feat as it is, picking one. And then, you know, reimagining it was, was, was actually, it kind of came about, um, I don't want to say easy, but it kind of, it, it was very organic, you know, it was very, it was very natural and it, so you know, it was really, it was really, uh, I got to give props to my, my guitar player and our, our, he's, he produces all of our music, Karnik. He, okay. he, he just has such a, a knack for that stuff. That's awesome. Now, now, how scary is it to do a cover of uh, Sir Elton John and then send it to him and wait for his feedback? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, you know, when 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 you send the email, you, you you try and talk yourself down, like, oh, you know, it's, we're, just, we're just sending an email, no big deal. But you know, when you when you actually see, you know, where it's going, you, you kind of kind of hits you. It's like, wow, this is, you know. And, and on top of that, it's also, um, you know, it's pretty crazy. You know, I grew up on on um, a lot of '70s and and '80s and '60s and a lot of album rock. And, you know, Elton was, you know, I, I have a, I'm looking at my record collection right now and I've, I've got a ton of Elton records. And if you would have told me when I was like a, you know, 12 year old or 15 year old kid that I'd be sending off a, a cover of one of his songs to him, I, I would have, I would have said, you're crazy. Right. Well, that, that's pretty awesome though. Now, now once he starts uh, to play you guys on his show and, and talk about you guys, uh, how how much does that like really open things up for you guys? Like, do you see like an instant uh, feedback with new fans coming and, and listens and, and streams and downloads and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think there, there was definitely a, 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 an impact that was made. I mean, he has such a broad reach, you know, I mean, who doesn't love Elton John when, you know, when he sure. posted about it, you know, and on top of that, it was, um, 
yeah, it was, it was a, it, it, there definitely was an impact. Um, but you know, it, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. Absolutely. Now, speaking of impact, um, you guys have this new single out called, um, like a drug. And, uh, you know, I, first I, I listened to the single and then I went through and I watched the video and I, I mean, listening to the, the song is one thing, but watching the video is so, um, I, I don't even know what to say. How to say it. Like it, it, it's intense, eye opening, uh, it's moving. It, it's, it just escalates the song just to a whole nother level. Um, what, what did, was there a, a person particularly that inspired this? And then I find out this is where, again, where the spider web continues, where it's part of like a trilogy of songs and videos you guys are doing. Yeah. Um, well, the thing with the thing with the, you know, with the song is, or, or with the videos, I should say is they were really um, kind of obviously the, the byproduct of just, the, of just the songs. We, we had um, written this, you know, a batch of songs and we started to realize that there was kind of, um, common themes um, that 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 were in all of them, and and we kind of just came up with this this story, and um, the whole thing kind of just fell into place from there. But yeah, you're totally right. I mean, the, the 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 video, I think, and that's the purpose of a video, right? Is 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 really just to kind of give uh, a fresh life to the the song that you're listening to, you know? And sure. we kind of wanted to do something a little different than just us, you know, performing, and and we also you know, really made a, a a point to not be, I mean, we're obviously not in the videos, you know, and I think that that, that was, an, uh, was kind of kind of a little strange at first to some people when we kind of told them about it, like you're not in your own music video, but, um, right. you know, we, yeah, it's kind of weird, right? Uh, but we, you know, we, we kind of want to, uh, we kind of just wanted to take a different approach at it and almost just kind of create a movie that our music was the soundtrack to. Right. Now with this, I mean, it's a whole, um, it's a whole epidemic, uh, this whole um, drug thing. And I think that uh, video in general, I mean, I, I have, um, actually my stepson is an addict. So I, we, me and my wife experienced this firsthand and she's actually involved with a, quite a few of um, local heroin awareness uh, uh, groups in our area. So, I mean, this is something that we see day in and day out, but even like somebody who like myself, who's been around it going on eight or nine years now, even to see that video is so, um, it's still eye opening, and it's still such, I mean, I think it's something that you guys can actually use as a tool to, you know, help bring awareness to, to the country, the world with this epidemic that's going on. Yeah. You know, and that, that was definitely, um, like, you know, at the end of, of the videos we have, you know, um, all of the hotline numbers to, to, to all of the, you know, drug addiction or, or suicide prevention things. And, and the thing is, is with the video, um, you know, we kind of had a, you know, a responsibility to almost tell the other side of the coin that, I mean, I feel like a lot of times, you know, we kind of see almost kind of a glamorization of, of, uh, of, of say drugs and things like that. And I, and I just feel like nobody was really touching on, you know, what hap- what, what, what really happens, you know, after the party's over, you know, yeah. and I think that that was, that was kind of the, um, that was kind of the point there, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 we, we definitely hope that, you know, the video gets seen by all the right people, you know? Absolutely. No, and, and also I'm... let me, let me, well, I'm sorry. Also, let me add, okay. you know, Massive, massive thanks to you know your 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 wife and you for for doing all that you guys do over there. I think that's so cool. Thank you. Um, but but you guys are doing like a, like a three parts to this, and this is where I get a little confused. Um, so like a drug is the first part, correct? Yes. And then you guys did uh, part two is going to be called um, uh, time to start. Yeah, yeah. I can, already by the title, it kind of sounds a little confusing, right? Like we're releasing them out of order, and then also the yeah. titles of the songs themselves, right? Right. Because um, it's, yeah. It's, part three is already out as well. Yeah, part, part three, Insomnia is already out. Um, I mean, the thing with with these videos too is we, um, you know, we 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 knew Insomnia was going to be our first single, so. 
Um, okay. And we'd already we'd already filmed all the we, we you know we filmed all the videos in order, um, well, well at at the same time if you will, and and so we were kind of left in a position where we're like you know what let's um like let's just release them out of order, um, <laughs> and I think it's kind of it worked in a in a way where it it, it has drawn questions instead of just being kind of spoon fed you know it, it it's kind of like what's going on here, um, yeah because in the third video or, or insomnia there's there's questions that are kind of sprung about that, that the first video kind of answers a bit more. And then the third video or, or the second video will, see, I'm confusing myself now. The second <laughs> video will answer a few as well, you know? I, I'll tell you what, like you have me on the edge, like waiting for part two. Now that I've seen part yeah. one and three, like, <laughs> I'm left, left hanging here. It'll all make sense. I promise. <laughs> Now, how about like um, going on to the music side? Um, like, I, like I noticed that the first few years you guys were uh, were have been together. You know, you released a few EPs, and then it's the last couple of years. It's more or less just a focus of singles. Is that the fact of just the way the music business is and, and your direction, or is there plans to do a full length or another EP with this? Or yeah, um, it's kind of funny how that that that, that happened. Is we, we've actually just been in the studio and we actually recorded a full length record. But cool. um, you know, we're we're and this is kind of the first time that we've we've done this. Um, uh, you know, actually, because like you said, we've done EPs in the past. So actually, um, like a drug and insomnia are actually a lead ups to our full length that will be coming out this summer. Um, oh, cool. And that'll have yeah. So that we've we've written about. I'd say maybe about 15, 16 songs. So right now we're just in that brutal process of narrowing it all down and just kind of seeing what works and what, you know, what doesn't. So just picking the B-sides, if you know. Gotcha. But it, you know, it's kind of scary because it's almost like, and I hate to say it because I love the full lengths. I, I love double albums. I love triple albums if people don't. I just love music. But it's almost like you guys have hit home runs with these first two singles like it's almost like okay like you can just keep wetting people's appetite with these singles yeah we we, we i mean obviously it is kind of uh we're noticing that that people are leaning more towards a, you know approaching it as a singles market you know and kind of releasing one or two and, and we we definitely have plans to um before the record comes out obviously we're going to release time to start but there's also a few other songs that we'll probably re- release prior to the actual record um, but yeah, so, I mean, for us, it's, you know, we, we're just kind of in this, this weird situation where, where the writing just hasn't stopped and it's just kind of like, why, you know, why, why put a cork on it if it's, if it's producing some interesting material. So, um, you know, as it, as it comes, we're just, we're just kind of putting it out and, and, um, and, you know, it seems like you said, yeah, it seems like people are really enjoying it so far. Absolutely. Now, any idea when uh, the Time to Start video will be uh, coming out? Um, that should be coming out, I'd say, in the next couple months, definitely before the record. Um, so maybe okay. two months, but no exact date on that yet. Nice. And how about uh, touring plans? Any plans to be hitting the road, coming out here to see us in Philly? or? <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah, we, we, we've got um, – we're kind of in the in the logistics period right now, just kind of figuring out where we're going to go and and how we're going to get there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all kind of in the works. So we're definitely, you know, before the record, um, or, or I, I guess I should say after the record comes out, we're definitely looking to uh, follow that up with some with some dates kind of across the U.S. and maybe even some. Well, we just got back from Mexico right now, um, doing a little press over there, but we had a we had a show there too. So maybe some international stuff as well. Very cool. Now, now you're like a busy bee too. Am I, am I right? Like you manage a few other artists as well on top of doing your own thing. Um. Yeah. So what I do, um, I'm actually, um, I'm a vocal coach. So when I'm not, um, when I'm not uh, working with the band, I'm, I'm working with other artists and and um, kind of uh, mentoring them on 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 just kind of their voices, if you will. Um, so yeah, I'm, it's always a, it's always. A, I actually just got off a Skype lesson uh, prior to our interview right now. So yeah, it's always, it's always something to do. 
Wow. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, how much of that is uh, via Skype? <laughs> yes. I'd say about uh, maybe, you know, 40, 60 leaning on Skype. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. It's, it's a very interesting world we're living in anymore. <laughs> it is. I'm just, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I'm just living in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you're living in it, but you're leaving your mark, which is awesome too. Absolutely. Cool. So where uh, where should we send everybody to uh, to keep up to date with the band and uh, the music and these amazing videos that you're putting out? Yes, we have. Um, you know, we, we're 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 on all the on all the social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram. Um, of course, the best way to to you know, if you can't find us on any of their uh, any of those, which is unlikely, I hope, um, is just to, you know, go to charminglines.com. It'll have all the info and, and, you know, it'll keep, keep you update to date on, you know, when the records come out and all that stuff. Awesome. Killian, this is a uh, great talking to you, man. Uh, continued success. And, uh, I'm looking forward to <laughs> you got me hanging for this third video. I really am sitting waiting. <laughs> oh, of course. So yeah. Thank you, man. I, I, I love talking to you, man. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, hopefully you guys get out here to Philly. We can uh, hang out and uh, catch up and do some cheesesteaks or something. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm I'm totally game. That sounds great. Uh, sounds like a plan. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks so much, and take care, and uh, hope to talk again soon. All right, you take care, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye. All right, bye bye.